Now, in today's video, we're going to talk about five South African plants that are used not only for their culinary purposes, but also their medicine. And you know me already, me, I don't waste time, so I'm going to go straight into it. My name is Nayajeli and I am a medical herbalist. Now, the first herb is actually a very popular herb native to South Africa, and it's called Buchu. It's a herb that we learned a lot about when I was studying herbal medicine in the West because it's gained itself a huge reputation. Now, the Khoi people refer to a number of plants as Buchu, but the one that I'm talking about in particular has the botanical name of Agotima betulina, or you might find it under its older botanical name of Berisma betulina. I'm going to put the name there because you know me already when it comes to pronunciations. And this is a plant that's part of the Ruti ACA family that the Khoi people have been using this plant for centuries in a number of ways. Firstly, it's been used for urinary tract infections, it's been used as for kidney problems, digestive issues, as well as a diuretic. And evidence and research is showing that it is a powerful urinary antiseptic. Now, these antiseptic properties are down to a number of constituents and in part it's essential oils. And two of them I'd like to mention here is Pelugilo, and diasphenol, I'm going to put the name there. It's also an anti-inflammatory, a powerful anti-inflammatory. But the Khoi people have been using it for some other things as well. So it's been used as perfume. And also because it has this um, black currenty type flavor, it's also used as a flavoring agent. So you might find it used and added to foods. Now, when we're talking about dosage, if we're looking at the dried leaves, we're talking about roughly three to six gram a day as a tea for certain conditions of the urinary tract. Now, the next herb we're going to talk about is a well-known tea known throughout the world that has been given to us by South Africa. For that, we thank you. And it's also the national tea of South Africa, and that is Roy Bush tea also known as red bush tea and by the Latin name, botanical name as Aspalathus linearis. It's from the Fabiaceae family, which is the legume family. Now this tea has been used by the Khoi people for centuries, not only in terms of their foods for desserts and sauces, but also medicinally. So those suffering with insomnia, those suffering from allergies, if you were a mother whose child had colic, it was also used as a milk replacement, as well as a general health drink. It's showing antispasmodic properties, as well as anti-aging properties, which is why it's been added to creams and for skincare. On top of that, it's also got lots of antioxidants. And the two that I'd like to mention here are aspalathin and it's said to be good for heart health. So when we're looking at teas and their benefits and their uses, this rubbish tea, you're going right up there. I think I might need to add more of it now. Now, the next plant that we are going to talk about is a plant called wild garlic known in Zulu as Ishiaka. Ah. I know I'm destroying it. I, I apologize, please. Zulu people, don't come and kill me. I'm going to put the spelling there so you know what I'm talking about. It's known by the botanical name of Tobagia violacea. I'm going to put it there. And it's from a family with a long ass name, which I think is like Amalidaceae. Again, I'm going to put the spelling there. Now, this is a plant that has been used to flavor certain meat dishes as well as vegetable dishes in South Africa, but has a long history of use medicinally. Now, not only does this plant have antifungal, antibacterial, as well as anthelmintic properties, which means it mashes up worms, it was also traditionally used for that reason for fevers, colds, TB, as well as an ingredient that was often added to enemas. Now, this plant is similar to garlic in terms of containing the compound allein, but where it differs is the fact that the main sulfur-containing compound within this plant is called maracimin, which is what gives it its antimicrobial activity. It's also being found to also have antihypertensive uh, activity, which is beneficial for those who have higher blood pressure. Now, the next plant we call sour fig. Now, I'm going to give you the Khoi and Zulu names, and I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. So the Khoi name is Gokum or Gakum, and the Zulu name is Umgongosi. Please tell me if I'm pronouncing it anywhere close to how it actually pronounced, but I've got to put the spelling here so you know what it looks like. And the botanical name is Carpobrotus edulacis, alleged edulis, and it's from the Arizosia family. I'm going to put all the spellings there, 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 there. Now, this plant has been used in foods in terms of flavoring and seasoning of jams and curries. Now, the leaf and pulp are what we use as medicine and will often be used for things like wounds. It will be used for burns. It will be used for eczema. It contains lots of flavonoids. It contains tannins and also has uh, antimicrobial activities, which is why it's also been traditionally used for oral and vaginal thrush. 
On top of that, traditionally it has been used for certain digestive issues as well as TB. And I'd like to read this line in terms of what research is showing along those lines. And that is, research showed that a methanolic extract, extract of this plant inhibited the growth of phagocytose multidrug resistance mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now the mycobacterium tuberculosis is one of the bacteria involved in um, uh, TB. But remember I said phagocytose before I said that. So it was effective when that bacteria was phagocytized, which basically means that the immune system, the white blood cells had to go in and mash it up before this plant was effective. And that might give us an idea of how it was traditionally used and the process that it was traditionally used when it came to TB. Now, the next plant is wild dagger, also known in various uh, South African languages as uh, libake in Soto. Um finkane finkane gosa, um nyane in Zulu, ah, <laughs> and lo known as Leonotus leonorus in uh, Latin, which is the botanical name for this plant, and it's from the Lamiaceae family, which is the mint family, and like much of the mint family, it also has a strong smell. Now, the Nama people of South Africa and Namibia would use the powdered leaf to make small cakes, but there has been a long history of medicinal use of this plant. So, for example, the leaf and the roots will be used for snake bites. Decoctions of this plant will be used for skin issues like boils and eczema. And on top of this plant, on top of this, sorry, it was also smoked for helping with epilepsy. Now, research is showing that extracts of this plant are hypertensive, as well as anti-convulsant and anti-inflammatory. Traditionally, the plant has also been used for conditions like fevers, colds, influenza, bronchitis, as well as, of course, with the hypertensive activity, high blood pressure. And research is putting it down to one of the compounds that we will also find in a European plant called white whorehound. And it's a diterpene lactone called, I'm going to say the name correctly, Marubian. So like I said, it's also found in white whorehound and this plant again has also been used for similar uses in terms of bronchitis. Now, if you have enjoyed this video on five South African herbs and their medicinal benefits, don't forget to watch my Ghana video on the Ghanaian herbs and their medicinal uses. Take care and I'll see you next week.